Did you know that the WHO, that's the World Health Organization, states that health is the state of complete physical, mental and social well-being. And it's not merely just the absence of disease or infirmity. Now this might sound exaggerated, but the World Health Organization also say that positive mood within the normal range is a huge and important predictor of health and longevity. Today I'll be talking to you about chemicals in the brain and the relationship between the childhood to adulthood. Don't go anywhere. I'm Toyino Kanuga. I'm the author of the new release best-selling book Hosh to Raw. Hosh to Raw is my memoir. It's a true story of love, childhood trauma, but most importantly, my recovery. Now, you would, if you've been following me with, on my journey about all my topics, it's all to do with adverse childhood experiences and how we can get to the bottom of these and make it no longer a part of our society, particularly sexual abuse within families. So what really qualifies me to talk to you about these topics? So I have over so many years, over a decade worth of research I have made into what goes on in a child's brain when they are going through adverse childhood experiences. What takes place in their brain that when they grow up as an adult, they still hold onto those memories and it prevents them from living a fulfilling life. That's my research. It's also as a result of my various courses in psychology, such as an introduction to cognitive psychology, childhood adversity, and as well as mental health of young adults. But most importantly, why this is so ingrained in my soul and well-being is the fact that my story is all around childhood trauma and my recovery, my own personal experience. So growing up, I had quite a lot of adverse events. At the age of eight, I got suddenly taken away from my foster parents uh, in the UK and taken to Nigeria. There's nothing wrong going back to your motherland, of course, but it was quite abrupt in my case. And it didn't stop there. After that, I had so many adverse events in my life where I had a lot of physical ailments. I had no reason and had no idea why I did. But including those events was sexual abuse. So along my journey, I had so many ailments, pain, unforgiveness, hatred, anger, and all those had an impact on me. I had no idea as an adult that it had to do with my childhood. So it brought me to a real, real sense of uh, fulfillment to know that I can research and the information age we're in, I can know why this happened, I can't, I don't blame myself, have self-compassion and I want people, I want to bring people on board to say have self-compassion. So today it's more about putting it down to say this is scientific evidence to prove that everything that happened to you as a child and that's happening to you as an adult is scientifically proven. So I'm not a scientist, I'm not a doctor, I'm merely studying psychology at the moment which I'm sure by the 
as you're with me on the journey, you'll get to know that, yes, now I can say I am ABC, but at the moment I'm a student studying psychology and I'm so interested in the neurological aspect of the brain. So today, yes, it's brain chemicals and childhood to adulthood. So the brain chemicals that I'll be talking to you about today are the two most important chemicals, in my opinion anyway, that control our mood. And those two are dopamine and serotonin. Now, I'm not going to go all medically, scientifically, neurological inclined on you in terms of what I'll be discussing, but I'm going to bring it down to my level, how I understood it and how I thought, wow, so that's why. So the first thing is dopamine. What is dopamine? Dopamine is a neurotransmitter and in my late, in the layman's terms, I will call it a motivational drive type of chemical that gets released into our brain. And it's so huge on our mood and what we do and the effort we put into take action to do things. So that's the dopamine. On the other hand, we have serotonin. Now serotonin, as a lot of people will know, is mainly known to be called a happy chemical. And happy chemical, meaning that it releases chemicals, it's also a neurotransmitter, which to do with mood and how we feel, our emotions, and it releases chemicals into our brain when we feel happy. So those two work hand in hand. If one's high and the other's low, it's not balanced. So my interest in the two was the fact that growing up, I realised that I would often get into a low mood, but I'll have spikes of happiness. And when I'm happy, I get really happy. But then, of course, if I don't feel motivated to do things, the dopamine will not release the chemicals that will enable me to have the effort and motivational drive to do something. So I'd sort of like get back in a depressive mood. And then on the other hand, you could say, okay, now you're getting the drive, but you're not happy. I didn't quite see it that way. It was mostly if I'm happy, sometimes I won't have the drive. And sometimes I'll think, okay, I've got the drive, I'm doing it. And I felt like I was just doing it not happy, but I had to do it anyway. So when we don't get the balance of the dopamine and ser serotonin correct or right, we'll see that our mood will drastically change and we can fall into a depressive mood. And I think, uh, although I'm not going to look at the drug side, but of course, if people get into a really, really low mood and don't have the will to live, which dopamine is, it's actually having the will to live is having that dopamine in you as well as serotonin. If people get into a mood where they don't have a will to live, then it's it's trouble. And that's when they might be prescribed artificial dopamine or serotonin drug related um, chemicals to boost their brain um, chemicals in or chemicals in their brain. So my quick message to you today is that in order to get our balance of dopamine and serotonin right, the things that we can do, the things that I did to get myself out of the rut was to be in action. I had to change my behaviour. Some people will say positive affirmations and that is amazing. I do that. But I only did it when I got into action, changed my behaviour changed my fixed mindset to a growth mindset how did i do that in steps and so the first one i did was i got active so i started dancing if you know me i, I love dancing and it was actually accidental i didn't know that it was contributing to of course the release of chemicals in my brain which were positive and dancing music were unintentional healings for me and that's what I do do today especially in these unpre unprecedented times so dancing music anything that would make you get into that state of oh I feel happy secondly is be doing exercises 
So exercises number two. I know it's difficult, you say you're not in the mood to, but once you start going, you release one chemical that affects the serotonin, happiness, and it goes round and you, before you know it, you are okay with yourself. And then the third one is eating well. If you eat well, the chemicals will be released faster depending on what you're eating. So protein is a good one. And I have a lot of beans, lentils and all sorts just to release those chemicals. And then the other one is meditation. I know people might say woo, woo, woo but no, it gets you into a mood of just relaxation and breathing. And the only type of meditation that I've been doing recently is breathing. And I no longer just do one inhalation. I realise that two inhalations make it better. I'm going to put links to the bottom so you can see how. So, it sounds like, but it's one of those, one, two, and then release. So those are things that we can do to make sure that we have balanced chemicals in our brain to keep us going during these times where we need to lift our mood, we need to be happy, but we don't have the drive. We need to do things, intentional steps to get us onto the right track. So those are my little tips today about the chemicals we need to release into our brain intentional because of some adverse events in our life. And now we can say, wow, I'm taking deliberate intentional steps to get back on track so I don't get into a depressive mood. So there are all links at the bottom here that you can go into to expand your knowledge on this and to consolidate your learning. And also you'll see free ebooks to know a little bit more about me. But most importantly, Hosh to Raw is your baby. You can see other videos that I've released. Most importantly, the one about brain, I go right into the limbic system. So make sure you click on that and watch that video. Please follow me on this journey. Subscribe, comment, let's have that dialogue. Subscribe to Hosh to Raw and press that notification button so that you never miss a video of these so important videos that I release Tuesdays and Fridays. So remember, your inner child has a voice. Don't suppress it. Let it roar. Thanks for watching. Bye.